We are close to the center of Xinyang, the largest city in northeast China. Adjacent to some 8 million people's modern industrial city lies the magnificent Mukden Palace, alternatively known as the Imperial Palace of the Qing Dynasty. The palace is extensive in area and comprises 114 buildings divided into three sections, eastern, central, and western. The eastern section was constructed first and work started in 1625 during the reign of Emperor Taizhu. The last part of the construction was completed in 1783. In fact, the palace was built to resemble the Forbidden City, but with hints of Manchu and Tibetan influences. After the Qing Dynasty replaced the Ming Dynasty in 1644, the Mukden Palace lost its short tenure as the permanent official residence of the emperor and instead became a regional palace. In the year 1780 Hongli, the Qianlong Emperor added further extensions to the palace and successive Qing emperors usually stayed at the Mukden Palace for a portion of each year. In the mid-1950s, the Mukden Palace was converted into a museum and began to receive local visitors. Since the opening up of China, it has become an international cultural attraction. Mukden's proximity to Xinyang City has ensured its status as a must-see for the numerous visitors to the metropolis. The concise, symmetrical outlay of the many buildings within the complex can be clearly observed from the air. So the eastern section of the palace was the first to be completed, as we said before. It was used for important ceremonies, and the extensive courtyard area is enclosed within a stout wall with a small gate for access to the south. The main feature of the eastern section is the dazzling Dajing Hall. It has an octagonal shape and is reminiscent of a nomadic tent. The hall was erected on a low-stepped podium of carved stone. Dajing Hall was built with a wooden pillar structure and a glazed tile roof with double eaves. The wooden carvings below the eaves are coiled dragons of the Han tradition. Each of the ladies in this elegant parade wears the traditional Cheongsam dress of Manchu origin. This particular style was popularized in 1920s Shanghai. It is sometimes called the Mandarin gown.
On each side of the courtyard are five square banner pavilions. The walls of these pavilions were built in gray bricks. The wooden columns and doors have been painted red, and each has uniquely colorful decorative features. The central government owns the Mukden Palace. It is carefully protected as a national cultural heritage site by the Law of Protection of Cultural Relics of the People's Republic of China. Exquisite artifacts from the Qing Dynasty are on display at the side of the courtyard. The Mukden Palace covers about 60,000 square meters, encompassing its many buildings, courtyards, and gardens. The architecture is stereotypical of the Qing Dynasty, encompassing features of the majority Han and the Manchu and Mongolian ethnic minorities. Xinyang is an important industrial city in China's northeast. Since the 1930s, it has been a heavy industrial center and now has growing software, automotive, electronics productions, and several prestigious universities.
Moving from the eastern section to the central section of the palace, the main building is the impressive Jingdian Hall. The elaborate eaves and columns are of painted timber, with colorfully painted patterns of golden dragons in the early Qing Dynasty style. The Jingdian Hall has five rooms and was built without an inner ceiling. It was one of the most important buildings in the complex and when residing at the palace, it was where the emperor held court. Located at the central axis of the Imperial Palace, the Phoenix Tower looms majestically. This is a three-story structure and was the highest construction in the complex during the Qing Dynasty. There are three rooms on each floor, and it was the conference room and grand banquet hall for Qianlong, the second King Emperor. For many years, it was the tallest building in the whole of the city. On each side of the Phoenix Tower, other palatial buildings house the Emperor's concubines. The dragon often appears on walls and roofs in the palace. It is an essential creature in Chinese mythology, symbolizing potent and auspicious triumph over disaster and good fortune. For the emperor, it was a symbol of his imperial strength and power over his subjects. After the last emperor of China had been dethroned in 1926, 
and after making some minor repairs, the local authorities converted the palace area into a haven for scholars. After the People's Republic founding in 1949, it was opened to the general public and officially became a protected national relic in 1961. These exquisite carvings were created from jade. Jade is the stone of heaven and holds a special place to bring prosperity within Chinese culture. Jade symbolizes renewal, longevity, and immortality, and would have been highly valued during the Qing Dynasty. At the north side of the courtyard in the central section is the large timber-built Zhangsheng Hall. This construction has five rooms, and the emperor used it for meeting officials and entertaining foreign envoys. The wooden panels of Zhangsheng Hall are carefully painted with red and gold patterns in the style of the early Qing Dynasty. As you can see, there is no inner ceiling. The stone carvings by the steps up to the hall show the high level of local mason's skill. They are maintained to the highest standard.
The Wen Shu Tower is in the western section of the palace complex. It was the last part of the palace to be built by Emperor Qianlong's order in the 18th century. This building is the palace library and contains the famous and extensive scholarly works known as the Collection of the Four Treasuries. The Wenshu Tower has a black roof. Black symbolizes water, the enemy of fire, and thus protection of the priceless books housed beneath. The Xinyang Imperial Palace is one of only two royal palace complexes in China. Although impressive in its size and a world heritage site, it covers only about one twelfth of its sister palace area, Beijing's Forbidden City. Before leaving Mukden Palace, it is worth mentioning the elaborate Daqing Gate. It is the main entrance within the palace. Glazed tiles top the gate with green trimmings. To the sides of the gate are courtrooms and archways. The Palace of the Qing Dynasty in Xinyang is a museum of the highest standard and giving a meaningful insight into life in a bygone age. <laughs> 